Hello, Barmy Badgerami. Hey, Badgerami. Welcome to today's show. I hope you're all okay, guys. Now, today, we're going to be talking about Scottish slang words, making it into the dictionary. What else are we going to be talking about, Nick? Uh, the new Toy Story trailer's up. Everyone yeah. loves Toy Story, don't they? And, of course, Katie Price's current squeeze slagging her off from her mansion on a live stream. I mean, why would you do that? So, anyway, Nick, you've seen the new Toy Story trailer. I didn't, unfortunately, get a chance to see it. So I want you to tell me a little bit about the Toy Story trailer, Nicholas. There's an extra character called Forky. Oh, which dear. Which is made by Bonnie, who owns all the kids. Oh, OK. Who owns all the toys, even. OK. And, and, yeah, it's basically Forky runs away, and they have to try and get him back. Oh, Plus, OK. Interesting. Bonnie's favourite toy. Oh, okay. But yeah, you would have seen Forky in the sort of preview trailer, which oh, right. I think came out sometime last year. Right. And okay. Would you have? And yes, okay, yes, that's interesting. And they've just released the first trailer for it. The tr the film is out on the twenty first of June, mm. and it's got all it's got all the Toy Story characters that we've that uh, we fell in love with uh, two decades ago. Excellent. Yes, and do you think there's a great longevity with those characters, Nick? Mm. It's fantastic how there's such a great longevity with the Toy Story characters, and how that can be so much fun. And it's you know it's almost like bridging generational gaps now yeah. and everyone seems to love Toy Story and I think that's great and uh, it's, it's, it's a easy. really interesting point that they're going to be bridging these gaps mm. go on carry on buddy it's easy to forget just how kind of groundbreaking Toy Story was mm. when it first came out in most definitely 1996 yes most and definitely yeah you know it was one of the first you know properly computer computer generated cartoons that's right was, I was 16 yeah. when Toy Story came out that's mad how old were you Nick um I would have been about 14 or 15. Okay, yeah, so it just, it just shows you, you know, now we're <clears throat> of a certain age, then it just shows you how much, you know, and that can appeal now to little children and, and different people of all sorts of different generations. I think it's fantastic the way it can appeal to so many different people of so many different generations. I think uh, Pixar and Disney really hit a home run when they... Uh, made Toy Story. I think it's so appealing to lots of different people. It's great. But uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit more about the trailer, Nick. So, yes, it's uh, there's there's lots of Woody running after other characters. Okay. And there's a, there's a fun fair in there somewhere. Oh, okay, and, right. And yes, just lots of that. But basically they're running they're running after they're running after Forky, who mm. is basically a spork. Oh, okay. With, Roll with rolling eyes on. Oh, um, right, now I get you. Now we got yeah, some context. So. Okay, that's mad. That's fantastic. So it's not even a branded toy. It's, it's something that the child's made up. It's that's brilliant. That made. Oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, also talking about trailers while we're here, Avengers Endgame. Now, I just want to quickly slot this bit in, but it's fantastic the way they've recently announced, and this is like heaven to me, they've announced that most of the scenes in the trailers aren't going to even be in the film. And I think that's fantastic. Because that's like a non-spoiler warning. It means you can watch the trailer and not worry about spoilers at all. And, you know, that is like fantastic to me that's like the the ham in my sandwich and i just think that's great that the fact that you can watch the trailer and none of the film is going to be spoiled it's going to be great unlike age of ultron where they showed the whole film in one trailer well done marvel so i just think it was great that they actually now have changed it so it's better you know and, and there's going to be no spoilers it's great there we go Indeed. So, and now on to what we were going to talk about, Nick, which of course was, of course, Scottish words being slotted into the English dictionary. And I think it's great that colloquialisms, yes, I've managed to put my teeth in for that word, are now put into the English dictionary. I think it's great that it's really interesting when certain words get put in and they're made up and they then become part of popular culture and part of the appropriate dictionary I find and that just means you can put rude words in scrabble and get lots yeah. of points so you get so yeah it's like um it's i mean words like bam stick are now in so i think that's a that's an insult that's not used often enough no i don't and know much about bam stick i'll yeah, have to look that one up ball bag which is basically a take on 
ball bag. <laughs> but with B-A-W, of course. I think it's kind of like where they're trying to say something, but without making it obvious. That's right. Indeed, yes, this isn't true. Like, different things like F-E-C-K, don't say that word. But, you know, <laughs> all that sort of thing from Irish culture. <laughs> but, you know, all those sorts of different things are really amusing. And I think it's great that you can get all these different colloquialisms and they end up in the dictionary. I think it's fantastic. And I just think it, it's really interesting how the English language evolves over time and how... I like to bring back old words back. I really think it's interesting like to use older words, older slang, and people do a double take. And then you can tell that they're, you know, two seconds later looking up on their phone to actually understand what I've said to them. It's fantastic, you scallywag. But yes, it's great when they, like, people don't understand exactly what you have to say to them. And they're like Googling what the word means. It's great. And then they're learning different words and different things that are coming up. I think it's fantastic. So what is your take on it, Nick? Do you approve of slang being put into the Indian dictionary? What are your thoughts? Um, I think the thing is slang is always evolving and it becomes, mm. and you know, it kind of, and you know, the, the usage of it evolves as well. That's you right, know, yes. You know, language as a whole is always evolving. Mm. And I think, you know, if, if you get certain terms that are becoming uh, quite commonly used in a certain way mm. then you know that's that's then you know that's fair enough mm. you know it's to be honest with you it's it, the slang words I don't mind so much it's where you get words that are used incorrectly like the word literally that is about 95% of the time you hear someone say it it's referring to something that's not literal mm. um, and yeah, bears bears butters Butters, yeah, that's that I don't really get. I'll tell you after this. Right. But yeah, that's, it's a negative term, isn't it? Yes, most of it, It's a disapproving yeah. term. Disapproving term. And there's lots of weird and wonderful things out there that you think, oh, okay, that's where that comes from. <clears throat> and at, it's like... At the, other end of East <coughs> Lon at the other end of East London to this one, there's, you know, lots of the stuff that they, that they mention is basically a language unto itself. Indeed, remember, most definitely. I remember I was in. I remember I was doing. I was uh, invigilating at a school in Hackney. Mm. Uh, few, this is a few years back now. During the war. But there was uh, not during the war. Um, there was a. There, there was actually kind of like a, a wall display, mm. and they actually had some of the words uh, that that um, that are commonly used. It's kind of like from other cultures who okay. who've moved there. So, That's very interesting. Yes. But yes. It's so, yeah, no, always... not bumberclut in the dictionary <laughs> yet. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, in, buddy. Because that's what people are, people at the other end of East London are always calling. Well, it. of course, of course they are. Of course. But, you know, I prefer the term sir. Just, you know, that's better really, isn't it? But, yeah, I mean, it's rather amusing. But, yes. No, I don't think that's going to ever be in the uh, dictionary, Nick, which is always amusing. Largely because no one actually knows how to spell it, I think. Well, I don't know either, but, you know, it's always amusing. But uh, now let's talk about, um, of course, what we were going to discuss, which is Katie Price. If we must. Her new boyfriend has literally been very nasty to her. And I'm, I'm with Katie Price on this. I know Nick has some very unusual attitudes towards Katie Price and how she made her money and all that sort of thing. But I'm going to be on the defensive here. It's in her house. And her new boyfriend has basically said she's overweight and boring and has no personality on a live stream from her mansion. So she's so she's basically doing a lot doing a live stream trying to show them around her mansion and and kind of focuses in on her, on her boyfriend at some point and he says all those things. Yeah, and I just think, don't you think that's unfair? If someone came into your house and started filming you and said you were boring and you were overweight, I think you'd take a teeny whistle of umbrage on that one. Um, maybe a little bit, but I don't know. The thing is, they're dating, you know, apparent and... You know, apparently that's that's the thing. You know, when you're quite when you're quite close, you just end up insulting each other constantly. Yeah, but this was on a live stream. I I think it, you know she's going to be on thin ice here. You Neither know. of us have actually watched it. So no, it's, so. but you know, I I think Katie Price is a kind person in her own way. You know, 
I, you know, I know where you're coming from with all the fact that she may not have made her money, honestly, and all this sort of thing. But she's worked hard. And if you got saved off in your own house, I think you would take umbrage, Nick. Do you fancy her? I used to, you know, when I was like a kid. But yes, it's just one of these things where you think, come on, be nice to the woman. But yes. So it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think. I should say here that I'm not kind of like justifying it. No. You know, but I am sort of wondering whether it's a bit out of context and maybe a bit blown out of proportion. I mean, the last time, obviously, we uh, talked about Katie Price on the channel was when uh, she thought her (laughs) mansion was haunted. So, you know, I can't really go that far as to say maybe she was right, maybe she was not. Maybe it is just a... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some sort of a media stunt to uh, promote her in some way. That could be very interesting. I would love to know your thoughts on all the different topics we've talked about in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you appreciate the, uh, the effort it took. We had to wade through a lot of bad news I know. to get our topics. I was just to about one. to say that. Yeah, we made sure today was as happy as possible because there's just a load of old drivel and misery in the news this week and i've tried to avoid it we had to mention it last time because of obvious reasons but now i have decided to not mention that and obviously move forward with positive anecdotes peace and love peace and love bye for now barmy badger army see you later on guys bye